Hello guys, welcome to Game Chat Episode 2. This is the second uh, iteration of our uh, Game Chat series. Uh, last Sunday we talked about um, uh, do achievements really matter, and uh, I had some a uh, decent amount of views on there compared to regular videos, so I, I do thank you for that, guys. And uh, today in Game Chat we're going to be discussing um, the prophecy of uh, should DLC be free. And this is going to come down to... Um, it's... This could come. This could come down to opinions, um, like the last one did. And I do like opinions. I like opinions a lot. I think opinions are great. I want to hear you guys' opinions in these videos. I want to hear you guys' thoughts in these videos. So, um, the whole prophecy of DLC. Now, I'm gonna use Battlefield Hardline for an example because I think they did this very well. So, Battlefield Hardline had a great DLC season. You can, I mean, I guess you you could say that. They struggled a little bit with uh, game count because, um, you know, once the game sort of got on a little bit, a lot of people who didn't buy the game, or a lot of people who barely played the game, didn't really play the DLC that much. And so, you know, by DLC 2 and 3 and 4, uh, there weren't really any servers sold, which, you know, that's, that's just a product of the game not being that popular anyway. It's not so much the DLC's fault. But um, I think it was after the first DLC that they launched, which was um, Criminal Activity. It was the first one, I remember, because I did the full uh, series on that. After Criminal Activity came out, there was a little bit more of a break between DLC 1 and DLC 2, but they had a free map pack that came out called Blackout. And it was actually two regular campaign or two regular single, or not single player, two regular multiplayer maps that were launched in the darkness. So we had two new night maps, and then they also came out with um, uh, two variants of weapons we already made that were, I think one weapon was silenced and another weapon had some kind of a different fire rate to it with, with a silencer and a scope onto it. So we had two different weapon variants and two uh, free maps uh, that were um, regular single player maps that were in the dark. So we had a free, we had a free DLC, uh, basically, with uh, two maps we've already seen but there were night maps. I do believe it was Nightwoods and Night Job for the, the two free maps. Um, but um, it is very important take into consideration that it's not about what they put in the DLC, it's about the effort they put into it. You guys gotta remember that some some developers will give you free content, like I'm, you know, the guys that were able to succeed are doing an excellent job of uh, giving you free content. And, um, the, well, the, uh, I shouldn't say entirely free content, the maps are free, but you have to pretty much grind it out for the operators, and it's like, do you want to, you know, play 48 hours every other couple of days? for an operator or do you want to just spend a couple of dollars and get the renown for it and you know that's that's all that's you know it depends on how much you care about the game really because some of the operators in there are really good some of them are really not and so it's really all about what you guys want but um yeah rainbow six and uh and uh, the developers of visual games are very uh they're very good examples for this but I'm gonna go into my opinion now because I don't want this to be that long of a video because I think I made the last one a little bit too long. Ten minutes seems to be too long for that. But um, I I think it all narrows down to the developer in my opinion. Like people like um like Blizzard, Blizzard I shouldn't use but I'm going to because they did this with Overwatch. Overwatch has free updates and cosmetic items which are doing very well for themselves right now and they're keeping people coming back. And um, for the game of the year itself. We have not had paid DLC, and it is working fantastic for them. Um, obviously, we can understand why this would not work, because, you know, they only release one map at a time, and people wouldn't pay for that. But maybe, who knows, maybe if companies like DICE or Activision, or, you know, Call of Duty for that matter, Call of Duty's not really a company, but you know what I mean. Maybe companies like Call of Duty, if they release map packs, or if they release map packs, like, more intermittently, but one by one, maybe they wouldn't be a paid DLC. But then again, maybe that would ruin the whole thing of uh, a themed DLC. Like, obviously, Battlefield 1 is going to have themed DLCs. We know that our first one is French and our second one is Russian. We have no idea what the third and fourth ones are. Um, it's a game like that where I guess, you know, it's okay to have a themed DLC because, you know, it's themed. They're bringing, we didn't have the French in the vanilla game, so they're bringing them back into the DLC. Um, but I guess it would make sense that 
they would have the immediate attack back. So maybe that prophecy would be ruined for uh, dice, and I can see why. But um, I guess maybe if you think about it, I mean, what if everyone just went on and just said, let's just release these maps, you know, maybe let's do a map uh, once every three weeks and by itself, and we won't have to charge people for it because it's a, you know, it's, it's a brand new map, but it's one map, and it's all they're going to get. And then they can continue to put, maybe they can do it, um, I don't want to say battle packs because I, that's going to just get me into the argument of the stupid black market shit from Call of Duty, and I don't want to discuss it, that's not, has nothing to do with it. Um, but they could do one map, and then they could they could do maybe what Battlefield 4 did at the end of its DLC season with, um, I do believe it was a gun bench or something like that, or, or a gun box. But they had a DLC that came out where they added three weapons that were requested from the community. It was like three or four weapons that were requested from the community, and they put them into the game. Um, obviously, in CTE, they had no skins because they, the weapons were brand new and uh, people were using them for the first time, but, you know, eventually. Uh, these were fan favorite weapons, too. I know the AN-94 was in there. Um, and a couple of weapons that we've seen before, so that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah. Um, you know, it's just that prophecy of, uh, you know, do, do they want to release one map and maybe a couple of weapons with it at a time? But, um, I do think a lot of developers, especially Activision and DICE for that matter, they really love the prophecy of having a map pack and just being able to just have this whole, um, this whole box of COD that come out all at one time. And, and it, it brings, I, it does bring fans back, I'm not gonna lie to you, because I noticed a long time. Especially for Hardline. It didn't last a long time while it did, but for Hardline, when the map packs came out, there were people playing them. They were not that busy, but there were people playing them, and that's all that matters. And I had enough games played where I was able to record a decent series, and um, that's all that mattered to me. But, in the end, should they really be free? I'm going to go ahead and say yes and no. And this is all, it just goes down to developers. Like, as a developer, are you willing to take a chance and sacrifice your DLC season pricing as extra revenue for the game in hopes that people will show up to the game? And I do believe that that um, idea of um, thinking will bring more players in. Or do you want to say, oh, let's just make it a reasonable price. There's actually three options. We can make a reasonable price. Like maybe uh, we're going to have four DLCs for the price of $25, but there won't be that much content in them. But it'll just, be, it'll just be maps, nothing else. Four, four maps every uh, three months, and you're gonna pay $25 and nothing else for that. They could say that. Um, but I do believe the majority of them like the option of, let's just make this DLC 50, 50 bucks or 40 bucks, whatever it is. I think Battlefront was 40 hours, which is kinda nice. Um, let's make this DLC 50 bucks. Uh, you're gonna get four new weapons every DLC, you're gonna get new vehicles, you're gonna get new maps. Um, new soldiers, obviously, in this case of uh, Battlefield. And, um, you know, it'll just keep coming back every month. But, in the end, this has been a heated topic for a long time now, and uh, I think I actually can uh, use Titanfall as an example. Well, Titanfall, for you guys who don't know, Titanfall 2 just went into full uh, free DLC mode. Um, their entire season is going to be free, which is great for the players, because obviously Titanfall 2 is a pretty popular game. It's not, it doesn't have that many players, to be honest with you. Um, honestly, it doesn't. There's not a lot of people playing that game. But it is indeed got a, uh, I heard a campaign was one of the best campaigns, which is fantastic, because I know the first Titanfall 2 will like the campaign, and people didn't like that. But, um, that's going to be all for today, so you guys, um, please let me know in the comment section below, and let me know what you think on Twitter and Facebook. Do you think DLC for everything should be free? And this question is just, it's, it's a yes and no answer, dude. It goes both ways. And I shared with you my opinion, and I just want to hear what you guys think. So, please you know share your stuff with me in the comments below and on the internet and on youtube and uh, everything and um i'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video and uh, stay tuned next sunday for our episode three of game chat and uh yeah guys have a great day see you later